Good morning. I am uh, Dr. Jagriti Gangopadhyay and uh, I am an assistant professor at Manipal Center for Humanities at uh, Manipal Academy of Higher Education. And the title of my presentation is uh, Single Parenting, Challenging Traditional Familial Norms in Urban India. I want to thank uh, Dr. Morena Tatari for reaching out to me for this uh, topic and for this to giving me this opportunity to present at this conference. I also think it is very important to, uh, this, this is a very important panel that which I'm a part of on single parenting is resistance, it's at, uh, to understand that how this is gradually coming up across as a new form of parenting and particularly I will be talking about the case of India because uh, in India, it is uh, it is a very very new phenomenon. So, yeah. so with this, I start my presentation. Uh, there are uh, in India there are two common family structures in India. The first one is of course the multi generational family system, and uh, there is uh, uh, sufficient uh, literature to show that uh, there is uh, uh, there is a lot of work by family sociologists on. Uh, 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 kinship structures, then uh, joint family network ties and the uh, media and the family. So there is a lot of scholarship on that. Now uh, with this, uh, there are many prominent scholars such as Dr. I.P. Desai, A.M. Shah, T.N. Madhin, Patricia Bhra, I've worked in different parts. So for example, in Ahmedabad, uh, it has been extensively researched on the family structures of uh, uh, in different family, uh, how kin networks network ties etc they actually uh, behave in different contexts in different social context the uh, TN Madan's work on Kashmiri Pandits has also extensively demonstrated how uh, grandparenting etc support systems they play a very big role in the multi-generational family setup Patricia Oprah's work on media particularly joint family uh, system in the sense of uh, popular films such as Hum Aapke Hai Kaun then Dil Wale Dul and Yali Chayenge some of very popular Bollywood films and how they play play a significant role in channelizing joint family system values across India. In a nutshell, what has been primarily shown is that uh, grandparenting and elderly care are two of the main reasons. Also legally, it is uh, the norm that adult children will actually provide elderly care to their children. So these are uh, the main reasons why multi-generational family system is very popular in India. A nuclear family system is also is in fact one of the uh, it's, it's the leading uh, family structure in India currently, and it is often viewed as an outcome of uh, globalization, changing migration, etc. Patterns within India and, and the employment requirements. And these are the reasons why it is understood that nuclear family system is on the rise. Uh, and in fact, it is often blamed that nuclear family system was the reason why the nuclear uh, the joint family system gradually started breaking up. Uh, However, the point is that the focus is on heterogeneous couples who are a man and a wife, uh, who has a wife and has one child or two child. Like that is the normal family structure. That is that is what India follows. And single parenting against this backdrop is resistance, and that is how I'm going to be showing through my study. So uh, I'm going to be talk, start talking about some recent family changes. One is that the, there is a rise in only couples. So, for example, that is eight percent. Single parents are 6.3 percent, and uh, single mothers are 5.4. The reasons, of course, are high divorce rates, desertion, and the desire to become a single parent are the reasons for the rise in single parenting in India. But does what does it mean for in that sense? So this is why I'm I'm asking a few questions, and these are the basis for my research. Are, are like are traditional family forms actually changing in India? What do single parents face stigma? And what are the challenges that they navigate on an everyday basis? And uh, also the reason why I'm, I chose to focus on single parents also because there's lack of academic scholarship. Like I said that most of the scholarship revolves around, there is uh, particularly, there is a lot of scholarship on multi-generational family system. And the media in fact uh, celebrates uh, single parenting. And there is also some amount of scholarship on single mothers, but single parents generally as a category is a miss in the academic narrative and the media narrative. So for instance, if we see that even all the films, Mother India, of course, is a slightly older film, but even the recent other films, I've tried to choose one film from every decade and to show that they actually focus on single mothers, though not any film in that sense particularly highlights, except for a little bit of Neil Bhattisanata, where there is some focus on how 
uh, single mothers, the challenges that they face every day, but that not necessarily there is a focus and stigma on the problems that single mothers face. So there is also, a, media generally celebrates single parenting. So I'm actually going to be talking about the many challenges of single parenting and also uh, what is it, what are the reasons that, you know, people still opt for single parenting despite uh, the, the, the various, this very traditional family structure setup that exists. How do the people navigate that? So how do people navigate traditional value systems against uh, this very new form of family resistance that is coming up? Uh, I used a qualitative approach uh, to do my study and this is narrative style uh, interviews and face-to-face uh, uh, -face interviews um, primarily. The questionnaire was semi-structured and it was semi-structured interviews. I covered major cities of Kolkata, Bangalore, Delhi and Pune and I did a total of uh, 25 interviews. I interviewed uh, single parents the, for the last three to five years and uh, major reasons were divorced, but don't desire to be a single parent. I interviewed 15 single mothers and 10 single fathers and average age group was 35 to 40. Here I must also add that I myself am in a living apart together arrangement. My husband lives in Rajasthan and I live here alone with our child in Karnataka, Manipal. So I have some experience of single parenting. So because of that, it was easy for me to draw the questionnaire to relate to some of the findings. However, at no point did I probe or did I uh, of course, some of the sample were actually through, uh, I used an advertisement on social media websites and I did the interviews, but uh, I was also aware of some groups, etc. where uh, I knew a few people, so I also used snowball sampling and uh, etc. And But the primary reason why I uh, could connect also was that this is kind of a semi-ethnographic semi study, however, it did not influence the findings is what I want to say. So it is a very neutral objective research that I'm going to be presenting. So uh, one thing I found was that 70% of the single parents live with their parents and 30% uh, live alone, like only with the child. All the respondents were working professional, men or women. Uh, main forms of support were uh, elderly parents, uh, nannies, daycares, precious schools and 90% of the single parents had a pet after they became single parents. Now, also I would want to add here that uh, the single fathers I, they, I interviewed, they were actually uh, either divorced, uh, sorry, either widowed or they were uh, the desire to become a single father. So some of them have also become through surrogates uh, and they don't want to marry, but they wanted to have a child. But I could not interview any uh, single father who has been divorced and has custody of the child. I could not find any such respondent. So I would say that that is a bias and also uh, I, uh, all my respondents are Hindus, uh, upper caste, upper middle class, and these are some of the biases. And I, th I think also it is because of my own background as a researcher. And I want to state this at the very beginning because these are some of the limitations of uh, small sample slides, qualitative studies, snowball sampling, etc. So, I, but I want to uh, add that at the very beginning. Uh, battling stigma is one of the biggest uh, issues that all the single parents highlighted and they said that the, though uh, now there is gradual rise of single parenting and people at least know but they often face this question you know where is the father where is the mother mothers face this question that uh, how do you manage everything alone and doesn't the child miss the father and uh, the, the, the father in fact and that is what was I was found I found that uh, uh, the father often uh, is questioned whether he is at all able to do a good job with the uh, parenting because, you know, he, most of the single fathers said that parenting is still seen as very mother's role and uh, it, it's not really seen as the father's role. So, they, so there is this uh, very uh, dif difficult uh, point that, that they have to justify all the time that they are doing a good job with the parenting. All of them were very worried about the child's mental well-being because they were aware that their child would often face questions and particularly when there would be annual days and when one parent would be present and what about the other parent and they believed that children fail to understand because of this very traditional family structure that they see on a regular basis. So there is uh, this constant problem and in fact with regard to support groups they believe that there is very little support system and not just like no, there are very few NGOs or online groups and there is nothing for children where children could go and receive counseling and you know it could be made them to understand that how 
essentially single parenting works and the reasons for single parenting etc because uh, children and often some of them also had children who were very young like four to six years of age so it was very hard for those, for them to explain this idea of single parenting and that is the biggest challenge that was highlighted there were also financial worries because uh, um, well, uh, some of them receive support from spouses, but there was also financial worries because uh, the, they argued that uh, some of them also had to take care of their older parents. So they were often sandwiched between the child's needs and their parents' needs. And they always wanted to do more for the child so that the child doesn't feel that it is, uh, you know, that the parent is not fulfilled by needs, etc. And they don't, they want to also, it becomes a problem because they want to fulfill the role of dual parenting. So that that is those are some of the major issues that uh, that they actually face the single parents uh, with this i also want to say that uh, though uh, single parents are rising etc and uh, here uh, it, the, most of the single parents also pointed out that they do have their happy moments they do have their joys because the child does give them a lot of joy but it is also important to understand that all my respondents like i said were upper middle class they had much more access in in comparison to other class groups and uh, here I think I could have access to single fathers primarily because you know because of this class group that I interviewed though of course the single fathers mentioned that they are often questioned about their parenting skills because of the very gender notion of parenting in India and they uh, like they, they also find it hard to take leave when the child is sick because they say that most companies don't have paternity leave so uh, these are some of the challenges but then the question to ask is that despite these struggles then is it still a form of resistance and yes the answer is yes it is uh, a form of resistance but it is also important to understand the way forward the first one is to that definitely there needs to be creation of more support and counseling groups for single parents and maybe then later on for the children also also a lot of parents were uh, unhappy with the quality of services they got for outsourced care like the form of nannies daycares and creches so there could be more training and uh, investment in providing quality care, particularly with regard to outsource care. And employers could also be more flexible with timings and leaves because actually in India, what the United Nations report also said, and I have also written about this, is that single mothers are on the rise primarily because a lot of mothers are deserted by their alcoholic husbands, primarily in the lower middle class and the economically uh, marginalized groups and most of them are with women who are bearing the burden of single parenting and they don't have one child they have, often have two to three kids so it is important for the government to acknowledge their needs to acknowledge what are the problems and challenges that they face and it is also important to recognize this as a new family form so unless so it's, it's actually a moment to uh, celebrate in the sense that single parenting is gradually gaining ground against the backdrop of tradition in, in India and however there also needs to be adequate support systems in place so that it survives and thrives in the coming years and on in the, in the in the future for the future generations as well with this I conclude my presentation and I thank you again for this uh, for everybody for this gift for giving me this opportunity thank you